Well, from the Senate Republican side of the aisle, we're joined now by Senate Republican leader Bill Brady, Bloomington Republican. Good to have you back on the program, sir. Good to be with you, Jack. Uh, yeah, your take on uh, today's speech, probably a bit different than your Democratic colleague who was, who was just here. I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, took, I took it as very upbeat, uh, a willingness to set uh, the past aside and, and, and focus on Illinois' f past successes for tomorrow. Uh, to set the election aside and talk about what we can do in a bipartisan way and, and what we can agree on. And I was encouraged to hear the Democrats' response to the governor's balanced budget. There you was, know, a, there was a little snarkiness in that response, yeah. though, don't you agree? Well, I, I don't know that there was as much as there's really hope that we could come together. I mean, this is an election year, and I don't think anybody wants to be on the ballot come election day without Illinois legislature having passed a balanced budget. The balanced part is difficult. Uh, we differ on priorities, but I do think uh, there's a willingness uh, to at least embrace with enthusiasm the hope that we'll have an opportunity to do this. Um, so could it be easy? No. Uh, but the governor wants to do it, and I think my colleagues on both sides of the aisle hope to accomplish that. You think there's a way to do that with a lower tax rate, also given the governor's promises to increase funding of education? I do. It's, it's priorities, all right? Do you believe in in uh, more government spending in various areas, or do you believe in more government spending in the future of our children and their education? The governor's clearly focused on that as a priority, over a billion dollars in increased funding during his tenure. So, not that the Democrats don't believe in that as well, but they have some pet projects that, that may have to be sacrificed, uh, at least partially, in order to maintain that emphasis. And by rolling back uh, the tax increase, the governor realizes that the burden that the Democratic proposal put on taxpayers at the end of last year, particularly in light of the federal penalties, I mean, the federal tax changes uh, clearly indicate that states that have high property and high income taxes are no longer going to be subsidized by the federal government for states that keep their property and their income taxes lower, which continues to drive home the governor's point. We need to rein in property taxes for families as well as income taxes. We have a situation, of course, where this is not only a speech about the state of Illinois, but it's a statement on Bruce Rauner's incumbency and his record as Absolutely. the state's chief executive. Uh, he is in a primary battle now with the state representative from this chamber, Jeannie Ives of Wheaton. She's making uh, a serious and strong uh, uh, effort. Uh, she had a, a great... Uh, now, presentation before the Chicago Tribune's uh, editorial board the other day. Did Bruce Rauner reach out and solidify his support amongst Republicans here today with his speech? I think Bruce has. I've endorsed the governor. I, I believe that the governor needs to focus a lot more on his successes. No, I've been around here and have been a witness to state government for decades. Um, I have not seen any program with the magnitude of the education reform bill last year pass in a bipartisan way. The governor needs to focus on that success. I can tell you, in, in my studies of state government, nothing that monumental has ever happened to focus on that, the creation of jobs. Now, yeah, the governor is, is sometimes chastised for talking about the way that Illinois needs to change to attract businesses, and people take that as a negative. But we've had no one who's been a better salesman for bringing jobs to Illinois. I know firsthand, Brand Industries. I know what he's trying to do for Amazon. This governor sells what we have, but he also realizes there's more he'd like to be able to sell that other states have. But he's also, isn't he also muddling that message when he has governors from around surrounding states uh, saying that we're cleaning Illinois' clock because of your bad uh, well, business climate? Let's face it, that's a political message. That's about why people, and I've heard from thousands of people in Illinois about, go for it, governor, keep fighting for that, governor, we know you're right. That's a political message. And yes, the governor has to highlight areas that need to be changed. When we didn't get all we wanted from GE, and Massachusetts did because the Democratic liberals in Massachusetts understood that they needed to change and reform things to attract jobs, the governor has no choice but to bring that message back and talk for reforms. Uh, the governor has no choice to talk about the demand people have in the state for term limits, the demand they have to end at least the perception of corruption in the property tax system in Chicago. 
He's fighting for the average man, woman, and child in this state, and I applaud his efforts. But when you do that, and you point to the difference, you get labeled that you're negative. But no one has been a better salesman than Governor Rauner when it comes to attracting jobs and talking about Illinois' strengths. Leader Brady, your Democratic counterpart, Senate President John Cullerton, said, we nearly had a lot of the very reforms that the governor just spoke of, be it property taxes, workers' compensation, with a grand bargain agreement yeah. that was solidified with your predecessor, Leader Rodonio, that fell to the wayside because he said, quote, the governor can't no. make a deal. And, and that's unfair. Uh, I understand where President Culleton's coming from, and I negotiated much of that package with President Culleton in earnest. And we were at the cusp of a final deal uh, at midnight when we left the state capitol, only to have Speaker Madigan pass his own package, uh, br breaking ranks with a few Republicans, but pass his own package. And, and that's what destroyed the opportunity for a comprehensive plan. I, I'm not finding fault, but it was Speaker Madigan who decided to head a different direction uh, at that midnight hour the next day on that 4th of July weekend that left all the good things that we had discussed on the cutting room floor. Uh, that package would have been comprehensive. It would have provided more property tax relief and overall tax relief for the citizens of the state. It reformed state spending so that we didn't have a $3 billion systemic budget imbalance coming into this year. So I, I put that more on the shoulders of Speaker Madigan, right, wrong, or indifferent, because we in the Senate and, and we were negotiating a bipartisan package until Speaker Madigan decided to go a different direction on that July 4th weekend. I want to ask, excuse me, Rita, I want to ask about that budget. You know, as we were talking a little earlier, uh, that budget, $36.1 billion, is still off by at least a billion five in terms You're of. You're talking the, about the Madigan budget? We're talking about the budget that was passed yes. with Republican support as well, not did, as much it, as it, the Democrats, but there have. was You're Republican right. support. No, I, I confess that when Speaker Madigan went that direction, People were fatigued, their districts were fatigued, and, and Republicans broke with the Speaker. But it left uh, in abeyance a comprehensive package, and I wish the Speaker hadn't have done that because I do believe that we could have reached that monumental uh, compromise that would have really advanced the state comprehensively. You know, as you're speaking about putting the blame on Speaker Madigan for pulling the plug. That, of course, raises the notion of term limits, something that we've heard from the governor since he was a candidate, yet again in this speech. Uh, a twofold question there. Is there any hope for that to pass this year? I'm going to guess that, that that is no. But also, of course, you have been around quite some time in the General Assembly. So how do you uh, address supporting a governor who is calling for that so strictly, yeah. saying, I'll be here for eight years at the most, yeah. when you, of course, have been here for longer? Well, again, I think it's a matter of fairness. Every district ought to be under the same term limits. You know, there are, Speaker Madigan carries a de great deal of clout for his district because he's been here for over 40 years, right? Speaker of the House for 30. Uh, my district appreciates that we've got to be competitive with that, so they want to re-elect me, at least they have so far, to represent them. So, but if we level the playing field and have term limits for everybody, I think we'll learn that other states, it's worked well. It doesn't mean you can't have a career in political service. It just means you can't serve more than 10 years in one chamber. And, and I think that would be a positive outcome. No, Clearly, Speaker Madigan, Governor Rauner, are, are divided on this issue, as I am with Speaker Madigan. There are differences of opinion. He believes term limits are at the voters box. We believe that constitutional measures to protect that are better. So whether or not the Speaker is willing to engage and allow that to go on the ballot is really up to him. But I do believe the Governor realizes that the people need to know, the people they're electing for office, do they support term limits? What about this notion that the Governor also raised in terms of forbidding legislators from also serving as property tax attorneys. You, of course, are a real estate developer yes. and also have a, a side gig, if we can call it that. Yeah. Why property tax attorneys? Should there also be a ban on you, for example, developing yeah. properties? Are there conflicts of interest there? You know, I think what the governor's trying to drive home is the certainly the allegation, uh, not by the governor, but by residents of Chicago about a corrupt and unjust system. and. And whether that means legislators should be distanced to bring back a perception of impurity, uh, I understand what he's trying to drive at here. And I applaud him. How we come about that uh, needs to have further discussion. But there is a very serious allegation of impropriety, particularly in the Cook County area, when it comes to the property tax system, the appeal system, and so forth. I think the governor is echoing what the voters are telling him when he travels throughout the area about what needs to change.
Leader Brady, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate it. Great to we'll be with you. We'll see you back here in a couple of weeks after the budget right. message. Always Thank good you to have much. you on the program.